This is Grown Man Game Reviews, where I give you a grown man's perspective on the newest games. No BS, no bias, just my thoughts and honest opinion about the games I play. And today's game is Ghost of Tsushima. This game was being touted as the last big AAA game to come out for the PS4, and I'm sure some of you are probably wondering if it lived up to the hype. Well, in some ways it definitely did, but it's not without its shortcomings. I've got plenty to say, so let's just dive into it. First off, the story. You play as a samurai, Jin Sakai. The game opens with a big fight piece. The island of Tsushima is being invaded by Mongols. You inevitably end up losing the opening battle, which is not a big shocker, and you spend the rest of the game exacting revenge on the invaders. While doing so, you're also gaining the reputation of being the ghost. The actual main story is nothing special, but it's the side characters that you meet along the way that really drive the narrative. Some of these side characters that you meet make for probably the most impactful moments in the game. Now, as for the world, Tsushima is a beautiful island and definitely the main character of the game. From the rolling hills littered with beautiful flowers to the picturesque sunsets as you ride along the plains, the island has it all at a visual premium. I would put this world up against other beautiful open world games like The Witcher 3 or Assassin's Creed Odyssey or even Red Dead 2. It's that good. Plus, Sucker Punch does a really good job of using a way of guiding you along the island. They use this wind guiding system, so instead of having a HUD, which kind of takes away from the immersion of the gameplay, they have you follow the wind, and it's a better way of taking you from point A to point B more organically, in my opinion. I really have nothing bad to say about the island. Sucker Punch knocked it out the park with this one. Now, cosmetics. Let's talk about the good first. You get a lot of cool looking gear in this game, and it's not too difficult to obtain. There's many different ways to stylize Jin. You can mix and match helmets, masks, and body armor to whatever you think is visually pleasing. Plus, you get upgrades and stats on your gear that help cater to your play style. So if you're more favoring the assassin style, there's gear for that. If you favor more of a samurai style, there's gear for that. It's just up to you on how you want to play. Now, the unfortunate part is that only the body armor has stats. So it really doesn't matter what helmet or what mask you use because there's no stats attached to them. You really could just throw whatever on as long as the body armor has the stats that you want. I wish personally that they would have given stats to the helmet and the masks to make them feel more meaningful, making them feel like there was actual choices behind wearing them. That's my personal gripe. Maybe some people will be happy with just having to worry about the body armor stats. Some gear though, you're never gonna wear because it only caters to a style that you don't wanna play. Uh, my example is there's a piece of gear called the Traveler's Attire, which the bonuses on that are strictly for finding collectibles throughout the game. Maybe that's cool if you're like a perfectionist and you wanna hunt down achievements, but for play style, it's not helping you in battle at all. On top of this, it's a little too easy to get gear in this game. I like that there's so many different styles of armor, but they're pretty easy to get. And by the time you hit Act 2, you can already be pretty beast with Jin Sakai. As for the progression system, they give you some good choices. You get three menus to upgrade, which are your stances, samurai, and ghost. There's tons of upgradables but there's gonna be certain upgrades that are just way more obvious necessities over others early on. You can also upgrade using this thing they call charms, which you'll get by doing quests throughout the game. These charms add different bonuses like moderate damage increase, stagger damage, uh, you earn resolve, or you get focus. There's plenty of them that you can get throughout the game, and some of them are really nice, but like I said earlier, you're gonna probably find the charms that suit your play style and stick with those throughout most of the campaign. Also, I like the upgrade system. I think it's a cool way that they're doing it. You don't really necessarily get XP by doing deeds for the people in Tsushima. You gain like a notoriety or your lore increases uh, on the island. You kind of start off as just like a beaten, battered samurai, but as you go on and progress and do more things for people on the island, you start becoming the ghost. And as you level up towards the ghost, you unlock 
more abilities and techniques. I think it's a cool take on the idea of XP and gaining it throughout the game. Many of the side characters quests can be interesting and deep. Unfortunately, there's also a problem of having the same old thing. A lot of these quests are something that you feel like you've done before in most open world games. They become kind of repetitive and if you're like myself, by the time you're midway through Act 2, you're kind of skipping the small side quests and just doing the more necessary quests to get yourself through the game. Some upgrades also don't feel like they make a big difference in game. You can add these charms, but I swear when I'm in battle, I don't feel like I'm doing more damage and I don't feel like I'm surviving any better. Maybe this is just me, I'm, maybe I'm not seeing it, but I just didn't feel like they were adding much to the game. It would have been nicer if you could have actually noticed something. Maybe something visibly that shows that you're stronger, that you're healthier, that your armor's more durable. I don't know, just something that would have made me feel like I was gaining something from these charms and these boosts. So let's go on to gameplay. Gameplay is pretty fun. I mean, you're a straight up samurai, and being a samurai is the best part of playing Jin. The sword play at times can feel excellent. You get these different stances to fight off different enemies, and it's kind of cool because in each stance you get different combos. So everything's always feeling kind of fresh when you're in a battle with three different enemies and one of them's a sword wielding Mongol while one of them's a bruiser and another guy is a bow and arrow specialist. You gotta find different ways to attack all these enemies which kind of keeps things fresh every time you're in battle. Also, I gotta admit, it looks cool when you're slicing through the opponents with all the blood flying everywhere. And also when you get into these standoffs, you get to execute people with one move and it, it looks pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Also, assassinating people at first can be quite fun. One of my favorite parts about the combat in this game is the 1v1 battles. I think that's where the swordplay really shines. They do a good job of making these battles feel meaningful and exciting. Unfortunately, everything else is not so cool. Playing as the ghost is just too easy. The AI is practically brain dead, and you can walk into their camps without hiding too much and just stab guys in the back of the head one by one without their friends ever noticing. Maybe I was spoiled by playing The Last of Us 2, but I really just feel like the AI was not doing their job in this game. They could have upped the difficulty a little bit, even at normal. Using the bow is nothing special. You'll use it from time to time in combat, especially in some scenarios where they force you to use it, but you never really feel like it matters much. And when you're in normal combat situations, it's practically an afterthought. Sword play, like I said, is cool at times, but it gets stagnant after a while. That mini game of switching stances for enemies in mid battle, it just doesn't feel organic. And also not organic is probably the standoff cutscenes. You'll know what I mean when you play this game, but it's this weird forced and not natural look where every time you start a standoff, the screen cuts to black, you walk up on your enemy, it's a very weird angle. Sometimes the angle is horrible and it'll leave you vulnerable in standoffs where the camera will be behind a bush and you can't see when the Mongol is trying to attack you. It's very weird how they did this and they could have done a lot more if they just stepped away from these weird cutscenes going into standoffs. Also the parkour in this world, it's weird. It's either impossible or it's in your face elementary. It's really wonky world traversing. I mean, sometimes you'll be able to climb these crazy mountainsides, and other times you won't even be able to get over your average size rock or terrain. And instead you do this weird floating animation, which you would think is something they would try to alleviate from a game that's supposed to look so real. It's really wonky and, and weird animations. And on top of that, if you ever get into a tussle with a bear on this game, when they throw you, it's it's weird. You just start floating in the air. Again, it's something visual. It's not game breaking, but when you see it, it kind of takes you out of the realism of the game. That's me personally. My biggest gripe with this game is the cutscenes. Every single time you talk to someone, there's a cutscene. This makes your interaction seem unnatural and it takes you out of the moment. Sometimes it's done well, but those times are few and far between. It would have been much cooler if they used cutscenes more sparingly and for more dramatic moments, not just every time you talk to some stranger on the side of the road. Now as for graphics, it was a leap in some ways. I mean, again, the island is just flat out gorgeous. 
Some characters like Jin or Lord Shimura have fantastic facial animations, and even the Mongol leader has his moments as well. The 1v1 battles are also beautiful, and they're great to look at and take part in. They're usually set in awesome remote locations that make for a visual spectacle and great moments in the game. Now they stumble in other ways. The facial animations for almost every other character are terrible. Some characters' faces have no life in them, making the stakes they face seem meaningless. Mongols and villagers also all begin to look the same by the second act. Another one, and this is me again, my personal opinion. Where's the dismemberment? The whole game is sword play and you're not cutting off arms or legs or limbs, you're not disemboweling anybody, at least not until around the third act. That's when you can finally start to slaughter some of your enemies, which is like you cutting off their heads. But you can only do it by sneaking up behind them. And I just figured in a game based around swordplay, you would have seen some more violent moments. They do a good job with the blood, but the body is always intact, kind of keeping me a little bit out of the moment and a little bit out of the realism of the game. Overall, I think it's a good game. I would definitely suggest playing it. If not for anything, the world itself is beautiful to just traverse and go around and see things. And the gameplay itself is also quite fun. The story, it's not the best, but the side characters do a good job, and I think that'll push the narrative along for you. It's got its flaws, but it's still a good game. 7.8, I think that's what it deserves. Give it a shot if you got the money. If not, you're not completely missing out on anything. You could probably catch it on a deal and still be happy with what you got. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to say anything, drop a comment below. And hit the subscribe if you want to follow along for more. You had gotten here sooner! I'm here now.